Greetings, this is Daniel Brissetto for Adobe Photoshop CC. And this is something you can do in CC or even CS6. And it's create 3D text using 3D and just using text tools. I saw some uh, actions online this week that mimic 3D uh, text. It was actually just creating multiple layers to uh, create the effect of 3D. And I'm going to show you why that takes a long time. And this is actually quite easy and it's re-editable because as we know, 3D is the ultimate smart object. I'm going to go ahead and turn that layer off for now. Here's my regular text. I'm going to switch to the text tool because I have this real easy button to get to is 3D and I just click it and I have 3D. I'm going to click the canvas here and there you go. I have my 3D text. Now I'm going to change the color of my text so we can actually see the effects I'm going to apply here. And I'm going to go ahead and select my properties. I'm going to go ahead and make that a nice red. There we go. And so to show you how easy this can be, I'm going to go ahead and click Scene, and here are presets. And these are render setting presets to give you different visualizations of your 3D object. There's a depth map, there's a bounding box, which is not very exciting, normals. They're different shaders that are applied, and in this case, I'm going to go to the one that I created called 3D Type Style. And it's going to immediately give you some effects here, and you can see there's maybe some lines that may be hard to see online. but I'm basically using something I set up here. So if I go back to my default setting, and I'll provide that online somehow, somewhere, so you can just use that as well. I'm going to say, click on my lines, make those active, and you can immediately see there's a very thin line here. And you can control the width here for this preview, but it will not actually render in ray trace right now. But if you guys, you know, clamor for, you know, a feature that says, hey, make these lines really awesome and maybe be able to change the width and do other dynamic things and please by all means you know like this video and spread the word and maybe the product managers are here you will do something I, I'm trying I'm trying but in the meantime if I ray trace this right now you'll get you'll get some lines here and you actually get some nice noise going on here and I, it's gonna smooth it out but I kinda like the way that is and so immediately I have 3d text with outlines so there are other tricks we can do here and I'm gonna go through all that I'm gonna pause this here so to get that white front, I'm going to go ahead and click this, click it again, I'm going to select the front, and I choose illumination, and I just made it white. I just blew it out. Let's go all the way there. And that's why in my rendering you saw that bright. So illumination means it's going to illuminate light, but in this case, um, as you know from other videos, you actually have to have physical geometry here for it to, to give off that light. The uh, magical ground plane that shows the shadows doesn't actually support the lighting, illumination lighting. Um, again, if you want that, clamor for it, and maybe we can get it in there um, by popular demand. But that would be the trick if you actually wanted to see the light come off here. For right now, I'm just using it to kind of to make a, a nice effect there. So let's go back to scene. And I know I'm kind of running through this. So you can ask questions or slow down the video. So I, I'm using the presets here. Um, like I said, I had one that's already made there. But it's simply checking this box. I leave it at 1. And that is all. That's all I have done to create this outline effect. The rest is just shading and whatnot. So let me show you what else I did for that scene. I turned off the IBL because I only wanted to concentrate on one light, which was this infinite light, which comes in by default. I moved it backwards. And I just keep pushing it back here. And I actually smoothed it out. And maybe I won't do it quite as much on this render. I'll just do a little bit of softness there. I'm going to go ahead and, and render this again. And then you kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Nice shadows, nice light, but it's kind of dark, right? It's kind of dark, so we can brighten this up a little bit. And I can go ahead and slam this light really bright. Let's just go ahead and make it like 350% and do that again, because I want to see my lines. See, now I can kind of see the lines here. And you'll notice on the one that I had rendered, there were some other lines. So here is the other part of that trick. And I know someone's going to beat me up for going, you're going too fast. But I'm just trying to show you all in a condensed form. I really just pause the video um, or ask questions. So here's another trick. So that is one rendering right there. The lines will always be that thin for now until we find another way to do that. But you could always copy this and paste it and do layer effects and layer styles. You know, you can come over here and do a layer style and maybe finagle it. Not on the 3D layer, but on, the, on another layer. But someone else can show you how to do that or I could do that if you really 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 want me to so again you're distracting me alright let's go over here I'm gonna select my type Adobe type 
and go to the, what do they call this? This is the cap. So the cap controls things like bevels. So you'll see here if I just push the bevel here, it, it goes larger and smaller. So I'm going to use the bevel as a kind of a way to cheat to do a line around the edge of that face. So I'm going to make it about 5 or 6. You know, I'm going to go about 10. 9, 10, whatever. Close enough. Now, to make this work, I went to my bevel texture in my material, click down here in the 3D panel, bevel material, and I'm just going to say, make that bevel color black. So now when I render it, so now it's black, the fuse color is black, it gives that illusion of being an outline here, and it's really just a flat bevel, but it accentuates it really nicely. And so you get some really cool effects there. And that's another way to get another outline or, or another kind of bolden it up since our lines are not becoming very thick as we saw from the rendering. So that is a lot that I just covered here. Um, there are other things you could probably mess around with in the scene panel and other rendering styles. I could change things. Um, I could say, you know what, let's go ahead and do this. Let's change this to, I'm going off script here, so bear with me. Let's go ahead and select scene and say, uh, solid shaded illustration, line illustration. Wow, look at that. Now you can change angle threshold here. It gives you how many lines you want. So in this case, look at that. It's about three degrees, so it took out all the lines here. And now the surface is not the color I want. I'm gonna make it red again. But I'm at the mercy of this shader now, so I don't have as much flexibility to change a lot of these colors. So I saw the front here, let's see. Maybe I'll change that front to white. I don't know if that'll work because it's a shade. No, it's not going to work on this case. But it does give me an interesting effect. Now the advantage of this is I could render this as I just did. And then I could copy this and put it on top of something else, right? Let's go ahead and turn that off. And go ahead and back to scene. Go back to use my 3D type style here to get back there quickly. So now I'm going to turn this back on. And I need to move it up a little bit. And this is where Photoshop comes in. So you can do 3D text. You're kind of ready. You might be kind of finished doing what you want to do. You may want to do some strange things. And here I've done something else. So my point is you can, this is kind of the final stage if you're making layers and whatnot. But if you're using an action that just 2D rasterized text, you're not going to be able to edit it. What if you wanted to change, you know, the lighting again? You wanted to do this, you want to go broader, you want to do something crazy, you want to blow out the shadows. You can't do that with uh, rasterized 3D stuff. You know, so while those things are really cool and neat, there's no modification. You can't, you know, even just rotate your object or your scene. This is the advantage of 3D. This is the wonder and awesomeness of 3D. And I encourage you guys to experiment. I went through a lot of stuff today, so please feel free to drop some questions, some lines, some comments, and I hope this was useful. And as always, thank you for watching.